Hello, so we're into our new unit, and in this unit we'll be talking about modus tollens. And in this video, I'll be talking about modus tollens in English. Modus tollens in English? What's modus tollens? So, it's a new inference rule. Uh, we've had two inference rules, so, well, three. We have had modus ponens, double negation introduction, and double negation elimination. And modus ponens is just about the conditional, and double negation introduction and elimination are just about negation. Modus tollens is going to interrelate the conditional and negation. So that's going to be a new rule that does that, and we'll see what it looks like. And first we'll see what it looks like in English, and then we'll see what this inference pattern looks like in the logical language. And in fact, it's one that you're very familiar with, and just like modus ponens, you use it all the time. So imagine you're in the airport, You've seen the first happy couple and the second unhappy couple, and they've all wandered off, or at least no longer hold your interest, and you turn to the uh, the TV monitor. This is an old story. I might need to update it, but that's okay. You can imagine, back in the day, when you didn't have your phones, or uh, maybe you're just watching CNN on your phone, and it, Larry King is interviewing Britney Spears. Maybe it needs to be updated. We have... Uh, maybe Harvey Levin interviewing Cardi B. But anyway, Brittany's talking to Larry, and she says, well, she's recounting this episode. She says, well, I knew this. Uh, I'm going to wear the golden blouse if I wear the gold heels. And so this is uh, a conditional. So it's if antecedent, then consequent. Note that the what's the antecedent? Well, it's whatever goes with if. So it's I wear the golden heels. It's not I'm going to wear the golden blouse. I'm going to wear the golden blouse comes first, but it's not the antecedent, because the antecedent is whatever the if attaches to, and the if comes in the middle, and so what the if attaches to comes at the end, and that's I wear the gold heels. So this is if antecedent, then consequent. And then she, she adds, but I'm not going to wear the golden blouse. Okay, well, so where is that? That's, um, we said that, I wear the gold heels as the antecedent, and so I'm going to wear the golden blouse as the consequent. So this is the negation of the consequent. This is not the consequent. She's saying the consequent of that conditional is false. And what follows? Well, she says, hey, uh, I'm, I'm not going to wear the gold heels. And she's right. That does follow. The antecedent is also false. If the conditional is true and the consequent is false, then so is the antecedent false. I'm going to wear the golden blouse if I wear the gold heels. Well, I'm not going to wear the gold blouse. Well, that means also I'm not going to wear the heels. If I was wearing the heels, I would be wearing the golden blouse, but I'm not wearing the golden blouse, so I must not be wearing the heels. So Brittany and Larry continue their conversation, and um, she mentions that she's recently taken a pregnancy test, which is a little, it's a little stick you pee on, and it changes color depending upon whether or not you're pregnant, and if you are pregnant, then it's supposed to turn blue, and so she says, well, look, uh, um, she says, if I'm pregnant, the indicator turned blue, and you believe her, you think if she's pregnant, the indicator turned blue, and that's a conditional, it's if antecedent, then consequent, and in this case, the if attaches to she's pregnant, and so she's pregnant is antecedent, and the consequent is the indicator turned blue. So she goes on to say that the indicator didn't turn blue. And what is that? Well, that's not consequent. The consequent of the conditional is the indicator turned blue, and this is saying no, no, it didn't. So this is saying no, the consequent is false. And at this point, the program shuts off, but you're able to figure out whether or not she's pregnant. And what you conclude is she's not pregnant. Uh, the indicator didn't turn blue, and that means that the... Uh, consequent of the conditional is false, but if the consequent is false, the antecedent also has to be false. If the antecedent was true, then you'd have a contradiction, and you don't have a contradiction. The only way that the indicator couldn't have turned blue is uh, that she's not pregnant, at least given the truth of this conditional, which we're assuming, because we're looking at the steps and reasoning. And so again, we conclude not antecedent. So we have if antecedent, then consequent, not consequent, so not antecedent. So this is modus tollens in English. Antecedent, arrow, consequent. Modus ponens said if the antecedent is true, then so is the consequent. And modus tollens just reverses that. It says, well, if the, if the consequent is false, then the antecedent is also false. Because if the antecedent were true, you would have been able to get the consequent, but we know the consequent isn't true. So you can't get the consequent, so you must not have the antecedent either. This is a good, valid form of reasoning. Consequent is false. 
if the antecedent were true, then you then the consequent will be true, and you'll be able to have it. But you can't have both of them, and so you can't have the antecedent. So here's our argument again. If she's pregnant, the indicator turned blue. The indicator didn't turn blue, and so she's not pregnant. Good, valid argument. No matter what, if the premises are true, so is the conclusion. Let's look at a different argument. If she's pregnant, the indicator turned blue, so same first premise. But now, different second premise. She's not pregnant. And the conclusion of this argument is, so the indicator didn't turn blue. So we want to ask, what do we think about this argument? So the first question we want to ask about this argument is whether or not it's modus tollens. So let's remember, what does modus tollens look like? It's, you have a conditional if antecedent, then consequent. And the second premise is not consequent. And the conclusion is not antecedent. So we want to ask, is that the form that we have in this case, this second, this new argument? Well, the first premise is, works. It's if antecedent, then consequent. It's a conditional. That's what we need. So now we want to ask, what about the second premise? Well, the second premise is the denial of the antecedent. It's not the denial of the consequent. That means that this is not modus tollens. It doesn't have the right form for modus tollens. Here, the premise is wrong. The premise is not antecedent. It's saying the antecedent of the conditional is she's pregnant, and the second premise is she's not pregnant. So the second premise says the first says that the antecedent of the first premise is false. But for modus tollens, we need to say that the consequent of the first premise is false, not the antecedent. So the premises aren't right. They don't fit together in the right way. They don't match. We need the negation of the consequent, but we don't have the negation of the consequent in this case. So it's not modus tollens. And there's another reason why it's not modus tollens. The conclusion is also wrong. For modus tollens, what do we get? We get the denial of the antecedent as the conclusion. We say the antecedent is false. We learned that the consequent was false, that's one of the premises, and so the conclusion is, oh, the antecedent is false as well, if it's modus tollens. And in this case, that's not what we have. In this argument, we have the denial of the consequent as our conclusion. So the, con the conclusion also does not match the modus tollens form. So this inference is not at all a modus tollens inference. But now, there's another question, which is, okay, maybe it's not modus tollens, but is it valid? Right? Valid says if the premises are true, then the conclusion is true no matter what. And one way to be valid is to be a modus tollens inference, but there are lots of other ways to be valid. So maybe this is, a, even though it's not modus tollens, is still a valid inference. It's still an inference that we should draw. So what do you think? Do you think we should draw this inference? It's a good inference by itself? It's complete? Not asking... Maybe the conclusion is true. Maybe the premises make the conclusion more likely. That's not the question we're asking. We're asking, is it the case that no matter what, if the premises are true, the conclusion is also true? Are the premises of this argument connected in that way? Well, in fact, they aren't. This is an invalid argument. Why? Well, it's possible that the premises be true, and at the same time, the conclusion false. How could that be? Well, suppose that uh, pregnancy tests aren't perfect. And they could fail in two ways. They could be a false negative, so you're pregnant and you take it and it doesn't turn blue. That would be a false negative. It's saying you're not pregnant when you are. Or it could be a false positive. It could say you are pregnant when you're not. And that would be kind of, that could be quite a surprise, but that can happen. Pregnancy tests are not completely perfect. And, you know, maybe the uh, little indicator got messed up or something. So if we just imagine that the uh, the pregnancy test is malfunctioning and it gives you a false positive result. So in fact, um, uh, you're not pregnant, but it nonetheless turns blue because it's malfunctioning. That could certainly happen. So we're imagining the situation is like this. The person who's taking the, press the test is not pregnant. Um, if they were pregnant, the indicator would turn blue the, the, the conditional is true. If the person taking the test is pregnant, the indicator will turn blue. But also, it turns out the indicator is not working very well, and it's going to turn blue anyway, even if the person taking the test is not pregnant. So we have the second premise is true. The person taking the test is not pregnant. The first premise is true. If the person taking the test is pregnant, the indicator turns blue. Uh, but 
the indicator turns blue anyway, even though the person taking the, the test is not pregnant, and so the conclusion is false. And so this is an invalid argument. Okay, so good. We've seen modus tollens in English. It's this inference pattern, if antecedent, then consequent, and not consequent, therefore not antecedent. And we reason with this all the time. And there are other similar uh, inference patterns that are not so good, like this one we just looked at. So in the next video, we're going to look at modus tollens in our formal language and how we turn it into symbols.